everybody. This is the first in a video series that Melissa DeCorte and I are doing on time intelligence issues. And the reason we chose to focus on time intelligence is just kind of looking at the concentration of issues on the forum. Probably 40 to 50% of them on a regular basis have some grounding in time intelligence. And so we've got some thoughts on some tools and techniques that we think will be helpful in addressing some of the common questions that we see on the forum in this area. So what I wanted to focus on today was creation of a holiday table. And it might seem like a strange topic to start with for time intelligence, kind of specific. But what we're going to be doing in the course of the series is building out an extension to the standard date table with some additional functionality and capabilities. And one of the things that's a prerequisite for that is development of a holiday table. So I wanted to walk you through um, how to do that. It gets into some interesting issues of um, querying, of web scraping, some things that may be of general value beyond just the creation of the holiday table. So there are three ways we can, we can do that. Um, the first of which is really simple, which is just use somebody else's holiday table. And that doesn't make for a real interesting discussion, but I did want to mention it because it brings up um, a site that, if you're not familiar with, is a really great resource called Kaggle. And it's a site of public data sets that you can use for a variety of things. Um, you can use it to build out your dimension tables. You can use it for practice. You can use it for special projects. Um, and in this site, I did find um, a data set of federal holidays 1966-2020. So if that's the time frame that you need, basically mission accomplished. So we can we can go in and go into Power Query, pull this in and take a look. So we just do our standard get data, text CSV, and then pull that in. And we always go to transform data to take a look at it first. And we see a couple of things here. We see that um, it's got an index, it's got a date, it's got holiday. This is generally what we need for a holiday table. Um, we also notice a couple other things about this. Is there are 484 distinct dates, but only 483 unique. And that a holiday table, like a day table, needs to have every entry unique. So in looking at this, for some reason, in 1989, they'd repeated Veterans Day. So what we want to do is go in here and remove our duplicates. OK, so now we've got only unique records in here. And then what we can do is we can, um, we can take and hide this index. Um, so if we go to Choose Columns, and we don't need this column, just need date and holiday. And this looks pretty good. So we can take and we can take this. Let's change the name here. U.S. Holidays 1966 to 2020. Hit enter. And then we hit apply. And we're basically good to go if that's the extent of what we need. But there's a second approach that I want to talk about, and that is pulling data off the web. OK, so now to pull data off the web, what we need to do is we need to find a website that's got what we need. And this one, Calendarpedia, just happens to have basically all the information that I think we need to pull this off. So we've got date, we've got holiday, we've got day of the week. And while we don't need that in our final table, it's going to be useful for a, a reason I'll explain in a minute. So if we go back into Power Query, we choose New Source and Web. And then we just enter our, our URL for that site. And that's going to chug along for a minute or two. And if we look here at table one, 
we'll see generally that's the information that we want. So we're going to say OK here. And that pulls it in. And we can see this is going to need a little bit of cleanup. Um, so we've got no headers. We've got some junk data in the first row. We've got some junk data in the last row. We've got this observed issue that we've got to deal with. So let's let's take these in sequence. So we can first go in, remove rows, uh, remove our top rows, one row from the top. And now what we can do is go to use first row as headers. And we want to change this from federal holiday just to holiday, if we remember what the structure of our 1966 to 2020 table was. So we go through that, and we'll keep day of the week for now. We're going to get rid of that later. What we see here is date is text. So I want to change that to a date field. Looking, starting to look pretty good. Um, if we remove rows, now we go to the bottom and take that bottom row off. And what we can see here is um, we've got we've got holidays like July 4th and then July 4th observed. But for our purposes, we don't really care about the weekend holidays. Um, since we're going to be dealing with, with weekends in a different way. So what we want is the observed holidays. So let's take out our Saturday and Sunday holidays here. And then what we can do is go replace values. Whoop. replace values and take out that observed marker. We don't need that. And so we're going to replace it with nothing. And similarly, there's this asterisk for President's Day. We don't need that. Again, replace values. And we take that out. And this is looking pretty good now. OK, so what we can do is choose our columns. And we don't need that day of the week anymore. And we can rename this to Holidays 2021. And if we only needed 2021 or just a year or two other than that, we could run this same process again, append the tables together, and we'd be done. But there's one more, one more method. So let's say we're going to be doing a lot of forecasting into the future, and we want to grab our dates from 2021 all the way to 2029. That's going to be a lot of repetition. And so um, there's a third way we can kind of build a, a, a simple web scraper to take those in automatically. And that's what we're going to look at next. So the third approach we can take is to build a simple web scraper off that page that we already brought in for 2021. And the first thing we're going to do in order to do that is again go to New Source. But in this, this case, instead of pulling in a web page, we're going to start with a blank query. And if we go up here to Advanced Editor, and we go to Source, what we're going to do here is we're going to specify the years that we that we want to pull into our query. So it's uh, 2021 to 2029. Okay, and we see no no errors here, so we're looking good. Hit done, and that creates a list, which is basically a column just of the years we want to pull in. We convert that to a table. Hit OK. And we'll change this from column one to year. And we'll change this query name 
we'll call this holiday grabs. Since these are the years that we want to we want to grab off the scraper. And you'll see in a minute what we're going to do with this. This is just some preparatory work. Okay, so if we go back into our 2021 query, we go to the advanced editor. What we can do is we can actually take this take this and turn it into a function. So instead of just grabbing one page, we can say uh, parentheses year as number as table. and give it the little symbol for a function. Clean up my typos here. And we're good to go there. And then what we want to do is if we look here, we see the URL specifies 2021. And basically this site repeats the same pattern for URLs 2021, 2022, 2023, etc. So instead of making this a static entry, we can do here is click on this. I'm just going to paste some text in here. And basically what we're doing here is we're creating a parameter instead of that 2021. So we're pulling in a number, changing it to text, adding it into the URL. And that number that we're pulling in is a year parameter. So this again, this is looking good. We can hit done. And now it's asking us, okay, what year do we want to pull in? So we're going to start it at 2021 again and see how it does the function. And then hit invoke. And it pulls it in automatically, it's looking good. Okay, so now what we do is go back to this holiday grab table that we created. And we go add column, invoke custom function. And we can just call it, call it custom, it's going to get wiped out in the process anyway. And then function query holidays 2021 and then year we just wanted to operate on that year from our holiday grab table and then we run this it's going to ask us about privacy these are public websites so we don't care we can just ignore privacy hit save and it's going to chug away and pull in our data so we'll give it a minute and see how it looks and we should see results in another few minutes. Okay, so what it does, it pulls in year and then holidays, it pulls it in as a table. So if we go here, just like we would do on a normal merge query, expand this and we see the, the date and holiday that we've got, that's what we need. Expand that and hey, that's looking good. So we don't need this year column we can go back here to choose columns. We can take that out. And then change this to date. If you remember our 1966 table was date and holiday. So we want that to line up and then change this to holiday. Whoop. Instead of holidays, let's change it to holiday just so it appends correctly. Okay, and now we can change the name of this from holiday grab the holidays 2021 to 2029. We can go ahead and apply this. And now we're basically just one step away need to wait till this finishes. Okay, and now if we go to append queries and append is new 
just two tables. We've got our 2021 to 2029 table and our 1966 to 19 to 2020. Append those. And now we've got basically 50 years of holidays. So now the question is, let's close and apply here. Okay, now let's take a look. So we've got this append one table. We can rename that to holiday. And we've got now our holiday table for our enhanced date table with over 50 years of holidays. So the question now is, okay, we've got that. How do we get it out of Power BI in order to bring it in to your table? And what we can do here is just say copy table. We can then go down here into Excel and then just control V and paste. And there we go. And we can save that as a holiday table. There are other ways to do it. You can extract from a visual, um, or if you've got a really large table, you can extract from DAC Studio, but that's a, a topic for another day. So that's it for today. Um, we'll then be moving into what we're going to do with this holiday table and the enhanced day table. Um, at this point, I really just want to thank everybody for watching, um, for your questions on the forum. And especially to Sam for giving us the opportunity to put these videos together under Enterprise DNA. So thanks again.